okay uh, welcome you all to this eighth lecture and uh, session we are going to start uh, another main half of this course uh, which is on design patterns uh, before i start i will just take up a few queries if there are any the question that if tomorrow the last date for submission of the assignment officially as per the announcement that i made on the portal yes tomorrow is the last date for submission while configuring the submission folders we intentionally gave the date as 24th we thought would not be visible to you people but unfortunately it is visible Uh, the reason was just to avoid uh, last minute delays so if there might be a shutdown of the uh, site server side or maybe some internet issues with a particular person and if you are not able to submit on time so i just kept a margin of uh, one or two days for submission right uh, so it is there so you can submit it till 24th the date is tomorrow and if you are done with your assignment it's good to submit it on time by tomorrow right instead of loading the server uh, on the last hour of the submission time i think uh, that is the only query and uh, i have been trying to answer most of the mails that have sent to me regarding the assignment submission etc in case you still have queries feel free to write to me uh, I'll reply as and when possible uh, once the some all the submissions are done because uh, there is there are a lot of uh, mail regarding change of groups so once the submissions are done uh, i will uh, evaluate the submissions collate them and uh reform the groups as per the assignments that you have submitted and upload the uh, modify list onto the e learn portal so that uh, you can um, cross verify it and in case there are still some issues we'll resolve it evaluation it's still going on right so you will get an intimation from the uh, uh, wlpd division and uh, it's still in progress right so we had uh, mid semester answer sheets and now we are having the regular ones and now we are having the makeup ones are coming up right so it like i think one week to 10 days uh by the update is i will share it with you for uh, the queries i'll take up if there are more so let's start now uh with the first session on design patterns right i understand what are design patterns i think many of you uh, are aware of what are design patterns and have used also uh, quite a few of them uh, but still uh, to add to it i'll explain uh, what does design pattern means in the first go and then we'll see three important design patterns of the part of gang of four patterns right uh, okay there's a request for a volume check check the volume at your side okay uh, so in software engineering a design pattern is a general reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem in software design right so there is uh, a capping of a common problem which occurs usually when you design an object oriented system right and this problem uh, so common that it has been documented and not only the problem it's documented its solution is also documented right and this is uh, this is what is termed as a design pattern right a solution to a commonly occurring problem is described as a design in pattern other number of audiences can understand 
the solution, the design pattern that is given, the design pattern is written using a defined template. That's an elaborate template of the design pattern. You can find it in most of the books, even in ICE book, right? So it first explains the template. By template, I mean that uh, first it explains the hand, the context in which their problem arises, and then the possible solution and n number of more uh, formats that are associated to it. So a design pattern is described using a template, which is a standard template, so that it is easier for a larger audience to understand the solution for the given problem. Right? So in order to understand the design pattern, it's important that first you are able to understand the problem that is in hand, the context or the scenarios in which the problem arises, and then how is that solved using the given design pattern, right? Design patterns usually provide a solution in terms of a object-oriented design, right? So it's at, it most works at a design level, but it's it, it explained using implementation as well. Right. In our textbook, if you go down, you will find uh, the details of the design patterns. And again, it is the point of sales case study, which is being uh, used to explain each design pattern. Right. Okay. Uh, the object-oriented design patterns typically show relationships and interactions between classes or objects without specifying the final application classes or objects that are involved. Right? So they always operate at a higher level wherein they, uh, the design patterns try to explain a solution in terms of a higher level design, right? You can, and in fact, we will also see how the design is also implemented, right? So that's also important uh, to understand design, however, uh, at a higher level, the design pattern explains specifically the design aspects that have to be used while solving the particular problem, right? Okay, let's see what are the benefits of design patterns. Design patterns, uh, as they were uh, defined or described for various problems, uh, occurring in the object-oriented domains, these are designed to take care of the various uh, fundamental uh, aspects that an object-oriented system must follow. Right? So most of these design patterns, uh, if you see, they encourage uh, cohesion, they uh, discourage coupling, right? And so many other principles which one must take care while designing uh, an object-oriented system. Right. These, these uh, principles, which are also called solid principles, and uh, there is another set of patterns, which is called grasp patterns. All these uh, we will take up more in detail in the coming lectures. They are a part of your course. However, to talk at a high level, we do understand that every object-oriented system must uh, adhere, the design of an object-oriented system must adhere to these principles. Right, so it should uh, the the classes should have low cohesion. Uh, sorry, should have high cohesion. Should have low coupling. There should be reusability of code. They should be designed that they can accommodate change, etc. Right, so design patterns. The solution that these patterns uh, propose is also based or also designed using uh, keeping in mind these object-oriented aspects. Right. So designs encourage code reuse and are designed to accommodate change. These patterns can speed up the development process by providing tested, proven development paradigms, right? So they provide a highly uh, uh, good, uh, which can be, uh, which can easily accommodate change, which actually speed up the development process, right? Uh, design patterns encourage more legible and maintainable code can be easily 
understood right so the aims with which the design patterns are uh, described or these are the solution these are the design solutions which a design pattern uh, uh, proposes and these solutions they are designed by uh, keeping in mind the various object oriented um, aspect that should be there in an object oriented design Uh, to start with, we will see the gang of four design patterns. There are something around six to seven design patterns which are there in your course. And uh, just to add before I start, the uh, just slides, the the video lectures that are uploaded on the eLearn portal start with the grass patterns and the solid principles, and then the gang of four. However, in these lectures, I will start first with the gang of four design patterns and then take up the rest of them later on. Right? So, gang of four design patterns uh, proposed by these four researchers, and that's the reason they are called gang of fours. Uh, these four researchers they proposed twenty-three design patterns in the ninety-four. And these 23 design patterns have been first categorized into three categories: creative patterns, structural design patterns, and behavioral design patterns. So the 23 design patterns are subdivided into these three categories. We do not have all the 23 of the design patterns in our course. We have around six to seven. Three of these we will cover today, and rest of them we'll do it in the next. Session and that will finish the gang of fours and then we'll move ahead with the remaining pattern. See these categories. What are crucial patterns? Patterns uh, provide instantiation mechanisms, make it easier to create objects in a way that suits the situation. Right. So they are basically related to the Uh, concept of creating object. That is the reason they are called creational patterns. When there are issues or problems related to uh, creation of objects, uh, we see two of them. That when do we have a when do we have such kind of problems? That these creational patterns help us and aid us design which is uh, which is better and suits the given situation. Situation. Type of design pattern category are structural design patterns, right? So, as the name suggests, they help in solving certain structural problems that might exist in a given context, right? Uh, that deals the problems that deals with the relationship between the various cases that exist in a particular object-oriented system. So these structural design patterns are aimed at designing, providing a cohesive structure, which is in solving the given problem at hand. Right. And finally, there are behavioral design patterns, which provide proven solutions to enable effective communication between the various entities existing in the object-oriented system. Right. We will see each one of them in detail. So start today with the creational patterns. Already discussed, the creational patterns are concerned about class instantiation. So whenever there is an issue related to creation of uh, objects, and maybe if the issues like uh, a large code, complex code is required to instantiate objects. Objects, how do you deal with that kind of a problem? Right, rational patterns are the ones that create objects for you rather than having you instantiate objects directly. Okay, okay. Uh, making it more abstract. So let's get down to a more deeper concept. Let us see uh, first pattern that we have. in or for today's lecture which is called the factory pattern right so this is one of the creational pattern uh, the rest of them that exist in this category are singleton builder 
vector artifact factory and prototype right and we have to see the factory pattern and the singleton pattern uh, today and these are the two Krishnal patterns that are there in your course okay um, we start with the factory pattern so let's first understand uh, what does the factory pattern uh, what is the problem that the factory pattern saw, uh, is to solve and then we'll see the implementation of the factory pattern for a given scenario and we understand that how the factory pattern has to solve the given problem right uh, so the problem that the factory pattern aims to solve is that who should be responsible for creating objects when there are special considerations such as complex creation logic, order to separate the Christian responsibilities for better cohesion, right? So this will come back to this problem again when we have the solution with us, right? So then the solution will in fact help us understand the problem in a much better way what we were trying to solve. Right, but in a quick nutshell, uh, the idea is the factory pattern helps us or provides special consideration in case there's a complex creational logic that is involved. Right, and the uh, the solution that it proposes is to uh, increase the question of the design as well as uh, keep in mind the concept of separation of concerns. The solution is, is create an object called a factory that handles the creation. Okay, one question, what do you mean by complex creation logic? I'll explain you, uh, explain that uh, with uh, an example and then you'll understand what I mean by a complex creation logic. Okay, move to the example. Now the example. Suppose that cake store offers four types of cakes. Okay, and it's the following design and the code. The code be ahead, but it has this design. Right, this cake store. It has a cake interface. Okay, uh, I forgot to write the word interface on top of it. That would be a correct UML notation. So this is a cake interface. Right, the interface provides four methods every cake every type of cake should implement right so there is a prepare method get and box okay every cake class which implements this particular cake interface must provide implementation for these methods right Additionally, there are four types of cakes which are offered by the cake store. So there are vanilla cakes, apple cakes, chocolate cakes, and butterscotch cake. Okay. Uh, um, uh, if you see carefully, this particular design, which already existing for a cake store, where uh, cake the uh, in interface is defined as cake which provides four methods which every type cake should implement right this particular design follows an important object oriented principle which is called code for an interface it is always encouraged that an or in an or design one must go for uh, this kind of a system wherein you try and uh, collate the important functions that that at every subclass is supposed to implement into an interface, and then every uh, class which is of the same, which different types, but uh, is uh, is required to. Uh, implement the same interface right this aspect is called code for an interface 
I will not jump to uh, the code for an interface example right now, but I have an example for code for an interface in the lecture itself. In today's uh, time permits, I would uh, uh, discuss that as well. However, if I do not discuss that one, I, I would still upload the, the those particular slides into uh, onto the lecture slides, right? So you can go through them. Right, it is very important that uh, it is encouraged that every in object oriented design where wherein you know that there can be n types of a particular type, right? And all those n types are expected to implement or predict certain kind of a behavior. Then you provide you get all those behaviors into an interface and make the uh, different types implement that interface right so uh, this is the current structure of the cake store right let's move and understand a uh, factory pattern right so let's not get lost in the code for an interface uh, but we'll factory pattern first however before that the is that this uh, this design which which is there for a cake store is a good design. It's a good old design because it's based on the code for interface concept, right? Okay. Now let's move ahead and understand the factory pattern. Okay. This is my K class. Let me just zoom it in. I think it's not visible. Very small. It's written. Okay. I hope visible now. All my gone. Anyways, we can still understand it. Right, so this the K store class. Okay, it's visible. The class. Let me uh, line line. So my K store class has third called order cake. Right, and it takes type. Right, and type which is me which kind of cake is required okay. I've create a, a cake instance of the cake into right based on the type is passed in the type parameter right instantiate an object of that particular cake Right, I'm clear. So in case the string contains vanilla, then I create an object of vanilla cake and assign it to the cake instance. Right. Similarly, if it is butterscotch, then I create an object of butterscotch. Then it cake, then I create an object of pineapple cake. If it's chocolate, then an instance of chocolate cake, and then finally, default. If something else is specified, then it's by default a pineapple cake, right? If you understand, take a uh, deeper look into this. All this is the creational logic, right? This is the creation logic, which is the con logic that I was just discussing which is required uh, which is required in order to find out which type of cake has to be created for the given scenario for the given order right so based on the six string type that is asked we need to determine which kind of cake is to be created right so the next creation logic uh, is placed in the order cake class, right? and then the rest of it is the preparation. So if you once you have the cake object with you, say cake dot prepare, bake, decorate, and box, right? So this is my entire logic, and then you return the cake object, right? So the entire logic which is there inside my cake store class right? there is a method which is order cake 
which is a complex creational logic for creating the type of object that is required based on a incoming input parameter. Right? Now you can even visualize how this particular uh, creational logic can be uh, can become more complex if I have say ten types of kicks and every kick might even have a different uh, uh, shapes associated with the kicks. Right, so then this creational logic becomes more complex, right? Okay, let's move. It. Uh, let me zoom it back. Okay, so uh, the issue is that my cake store class consists of code for two important processes one is the creation, and the other is the preparation of the cake. Why it's the cohesion principle. Okay, dating the cohesion principle. My cake store class is effectively doing something which it is not supposed to do. Right? It is getting involved in creation of the cake objects and right it is the, it is the method which is actually getting involved in the creation of the cake objects rather than preparing it right so it is uh, um, in the cohesion of the cake store class right we'll just quickly explain what do we mean by the cohesion principle uh, the cohesion principle states that that a task must do only the tasks related uh, should be responsible for doing related tasks. That's if a class uh, is doing some task which is highly unrelated to it, then you reduce you are reducing the cohesion of that particular class. Right. So in that case also, your cake store is actually getting involved in creational logic about cake uh, objects, which it is not supposed to do. Right. So a better way is to move the responsibility of the creation of objects into another class, and we term this class as a factory class. Right, so all creational logic is moved to a factory. A factory is one which is responsible for creating the object based on n number of events. And my cake store is only requesting the factory to to object of the key that is requested, and then you just prepare and bake and decorate and box the cake when an order is placed. Right. I'll just take up a few questions that are moving. Will we be asked to write codes like this in comprehensive examination? Uh, you may be asked to write some code, uh, although uh, view of Java and C++ comes in picture, right? But uh, if you see some past papers, there have been some questions on writing implementation a particular concept right but it is very less likely I mean or maybe the the percentage of marks for which for which it is asked is very small right not worry so much about it until you are aware of the Java programming language super Chris, what if bake method is different for each type Right, so every type of cake actually implements its own uh, bake, cake, uh, bake method, uh, pair, bake, decorate, box method. Right, it, the cake is not a super class, cake is an interface. Each of the class only implements that interface and provides implementation for each of the four methods. Right, so it is only handle of that interface which is assigned to that particular object of that particular class right and if you invoke let's go back 
the code. So the moment you invoke cake, cake, cake dot bake or cake. So these are the methods of the respective uh, cake objects which will be invoked, right? In the interface, the methods are not implemented. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, we move ahead and what uh, what is the solution that actually the factory uh, patterns provide us, right? So the factory pattern tells us to move this complex creational logic into a factory, right? Now term this as the cake factory. Let's understand this solution. Right, so we'll first take a look at the right hand side, which is my K factory, right? Particular class factory, right? It's a method called create cake in factory, and the same string is passed to this particular cake factory, right? Now, based on the type of the string, it creates the respective object, whichever should be there, and returns that object, right? So it returns a new object, right? An object gets assigned uh, using the uh, instance of the cake interface, right? Now let's go back how this tree is invoked. So coming back to the modified cake store, right? So in the modified cake store, you create a variable uh, create an attribute of the cake factory. Okay, this attribute is initialized uh, at the time of, of uh, the create of the cake store, right? So it's in the constructor of the cake store that you initialize the object that is there in the cake store, right? And then in the cake. Inciting the entire creational logic, you request a cake from the factory by working cake in factory accessing the type string. Right? Based on the type string, the cake factory invokes the create cake in factory and returns the object which is further used in the preparation of the cake. Right, so this is an example of a factory pattern that helps in moving complex creational logic into a class which is called factory. Factory is the only class that would, would, would be responsible for creating objects of the uh, type based on the given input from the user right just have a few questions uh, okay that's a good question i'm new to java can we write the class code in pattern question uh, uh, to answer because usually we it is expected to be written in java and in case there is some code that you might find Give question itself, it would be in Java. However, I would still say it is highly unlikely that you would uh, ask any question which is language specific, right? It would be highly unlikely that you would be asking any question which is language specific. But if there is some question, it will be only on Java, right? Really don't understand the question. Application important than preparation, right? Uh, uh, what I stand with this question is that why am I moving the creation concept into uh, another class instead of moving the preparation concept, right? See, the idea is that because my creational logic is a complex 
project. This is a very simple example that I have taken, which is based on cakes and etc. etc. Right? Uh, there are large number of complex uh, examples that would be there, wherein the uh, the type of object that has to be instantiated is based on on logic, right? Complex than this. The main class should not get involved in uh, in implementing that complex creation logic uh, and getting involved into a highly unrelated task. Right? Also, additionally, there might be some other uh, classes which would require uh, the sign of of instantiation, right? So in that case, those classes will also uh, redo the entire creational uh, logic in their code itself, right? So instead of putting the creational logic in two separate classes, right, I not dub it into one class, which is actually termed as factory, right? So every other class in my system which needs an object based on the type of the parameter is to that object from the factory and use it the way they want it. Right? Uh, the word factory is actually given uh, to such classes to emphasize that this is the place where the creational logic is stored, right? you can take it from here. Right? Factory is it's like a industry standard, right? So you understand the factory pattern is being used here, and this is the place uh, which is kind of a factory of object instantiations, right? This is, this is the place where the required objects would be instantiated and written back to the system. Right. It, in this case, case, it is a cake factory, right? A more uh, uh, analogy or uh, a more uh, an, an analogy which is more technical in the sense. So there might be an analogy where uh, you need database objects, right? So you uh, the concept of creation of database connection objects in a place which is termed as factory, and whenever an object is required. Right, it returned from there. Right, so that kind of an analogy is based with the concept of factory that this is a place where a uh, uh, objects can be taken from. Right, in sense. Okay, just take up a few few more questions. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so then that finalizing cake factory in cake store uh, constructor, you can use cake factory dot create cake factory method by calling by calling it right. At present, you cannot make the invocation because my uh, cake factory is not a static method. Right? You can please note that it's not a static method. But the reason why this question came in your mind is that uh, is thing to follow because uh, the factories are always implemented as singletons. Right? And that is the next pattern that we will see what a singleton pattern is. Right? A factory is always implemented as a singleton. And once we uh, go to the singleton pattern also we will redefine we will, will re-implement this particular cake factory to implement it as a single turn right? once we do that then this kind of invocation that you are mentioning will be <coughs> possible right okay i continue to take up more questions but at end i will move ahead 
Okay, so there's a question, do we have multiple factories? Trees are always implemented in singleton. I did not implement it here at U singleton pattern because it would confuse you. First, understand the factory pattern. We'll, next thing we'll do is that we'll understand the singleton pattern and then we will merge both the two implementation to see how factories are implemented as singleton, right? As of now, I hope that that the factory pattern is clear, right? So you move the criminal logic, which is actually taking most of the space of the order cake method. So it is taking most of the uh, tasks of the order cake method and making it do high unrelated tasks. So the idea is to move the creational, complex creational logic into another class. You can name that class anything, but just to have a standardized name, it is given a name which is uh, suffixed or prefixed with the word factory to explain that this is the implementation of a factory pattern, right? Uh, just to add, this, this kind of a concept is what you would be required to actually uh, implement and explain and design uh, in the next phase of the assignment. Right? In the next phase of the assignment, you would be asked to implement a uh, design and then implement some of the design patterns for the system that you have already designed in phase one. Right? Okay, I'll just take a, two quick questions. Okay, okay. Uh, I think the questions that are there, I would be able to answer in a better way once we do the singleton pattern as well. So let us move to the next slide. So factory handles the details of the object creation. So this method allows us to place the abstract code to an interface code into a superclass or an interface and place the object creation code in a subclass, right? So that was the factory pattern. Let's move ahead to the next one, which is the singleton pattern. Okay. Singleton pattern tells us, so this is the next kind of the creational pattern that we will take a look at. The singleton pattern ensures the class is only instantiated once and provides a global access point for this instance, right? Singleton pattern is that there exists only one instance of a particular the other class entire system is able to that single instance of the class. That, which, which are the classes which are implemented as singleton patterns or usually are the best candidate or in fact the required candidates to be implemented as singletons, right? Any class which is responsible for, say, recording or, or coding the uh, kind information of all the classes in entire system is one that is responsible for, that is the one that should be implemented as a singleton. Right? So in all the classes which a class which might record information about all the other classes or may provide resources to the other classes are good candidates to be implemented as singleton. Right? By singleton we may mean that only a single instance of these classes should exist, right? So examples of certain classes which are good kinds of singletons are, for example, a database manager, right? So any class which is responsible for managing data, 
connections as well as uh, the other database uh, interactions is a candidate for being a singleton. Right? By, by saying singleton, we mean that only a single instance of the database manner should exist in the system. Simply for another example could be the error log manager. Right? So a single instance of the error log manager is what the entire system, right? The other could be a window manager, uh, a single instance of a file system, or a single instance of a service factory. Right. So every factory that you might implement in your system must be implemented as a, using a singleton pattern. Right. Should be only one instance of the factory in the entire system. Right. Uh, coming to the point of sale system, your textbook, uh, there is a register class which is there in the point of sale system. Right. I hope. By now, everybody would have read the point of sale system. So the register class which actually records all the sales, right? So that register class is an important candidate to be implemented as a singleton, right? So it is a place where all the sales are recorded, right? So any class which is responsible for uh, say recording or providing information has to be uh, implemented using a singleton. Let's move ahead. Let's see how the singleton is implemented. Singleton pattern is that how do we ensure that class has only one instance and that instance is easily accessible, right? So we say that only one instance of that should exist how do we actually do it right so do we make a global variable out of it right violates encapsulation if a global variable out of um, uh, uh, for that particular class right what I'm doing is I'm violating encapsulation right but we done so I make a global variable and that variable is the one that I keep on passing to the other classes, which I need that particular variable, right? However, although this particular aspect violate encapsulation, but this particular solution does not prevent creation of multiple objects. Right? Even if this solution works good for you, even if you are ready to violate encapsulation and make a global variable and pass it on to the other classes, whichever need to uh, access that particular instance, it still does not prevent the creation of multiple objects, right? So we need to find a solution to implement the singleton, to implement a class so that only one instance of that class is created and can be created. Right? Only one instance of that class can be created and also that instance is globally visible to all. Right? So every, every other class that needs this particular instance is able to access it. Right? So the best solution to make this happen is class itself keep a track of its own instance. Right? So the Singleton pattern tells that for make the class itself responsible and we'll see how do we do that. Right? So the class itself, so the class which is implemented as a singleton itself ensures that no other instance can be created. It provides a way to access the single instance that exists, right? Okay, the, the implementation would help in understanding more, right? So this is the singleton pattern. The problem that it tries to solve is that exactly one instance of a class is allowed. Objects need a global and single point of access, right? So if we have a problem uh, wherein we want that only one instance of the class 
be there but it should be accessible to all and no more instances uh, creation of more instances should not be possible right so what a solution can make an object globally accessible a global variable but this violates encapsulation right the possibility is use of static operations and attributes but uh, because of this polymorphic redefinition is not possible so if we make all the methods and attributes of a particular class static right this would uh, in some ways solve the problem but then if you want to subclass that particular uh, certain class then classing on inheritance would not be possible for that particular singleton class right so we'll quickly see the solution that the singleton pattern pro <clears throat> static method of the class that returns the singleton okay create class with the class operation get instance okay it me go to the uh, implementation first and then i will come back to the slide let's understand this and then we'll be able to better understand the implementation given by the single button pattern okay this is a public class service factory so this is a factory which is implemented using a single button pattern right the first thing to notice is that the constructor of this particular class is private the constructor of the class is made private so that no class can instantiate this particular class right the static instance of this this class which is created here is also private right so there is a private static instance of this class which is created when class is first invoked additionally there is a static method which is the get instance which returns this particular instance right it the really important things that are made to convert any class into a singleton class right what I have to do the first thing is to convert uh, is to uh, make the constructor of the class private so that no other class can instantiate this particular class it is the same class only which is responsible for creating its own instance and maintaining a handle to that instance so whenever every other class needs an instance of this particular class the static method get instance returns that instance right so the class itself is responsible for uh, maintaining the singleton aspect of it right so the first thing we did was to make the constructor private the second we did was to instantiate the class create an instance of the same class which is static and private right so again this particular instance cannot be invoked outside right it's passed you this it is passed outside this instance is can be invoked outside only through the call of the get instance method which is also static right uh now kind of instantiation is called an eager instantiation right in singleton pattern when we are implementing a class as a singleton this particular kind of initialization is called eager initialization when we are creating an instance of the class right even for the first time the get instance method is called 
even before the first time the get instance method is called the service factory creates an instance of the of fitset right and when the get instance is called that instance is returned back to the uh, method which invokes it this is called eager initialization there is any uh, implementation of the singleton pattern lazy initialization that so what do in the lazy initialization the first instance of the implemented as a singleton pattern is created only in the get instance method i'll just explain this implementation again so here see we again have the constructor which is private then uh, instance of private static is initialized to null right so not instantiated here itself but when first time the get instance method is invoked check if the instance is null if it is null then an instance of the servitory class is created and it is returned right this is called lazy initialization now important aspect associated with this is that this clear method okay and just what happened okay this method right placed in a critical section Right. There, in a multi-threaded application, there could be chances that, that two patients, two patients, at the time invoke the get instance method, right. and we do not want two instances of the factory class to be created, of this certain class to be created. Right. So that case, this particular method has to be placed in a critical se session. section and that is the reason the word synchronized is added to the get instance method right. this synchronized word the word that is available in java right uh, helps that helps us to handle the critical section if the multi threaded application so right. this no two instances this synchronized word helps us to place this third into a critical section so that no two instances of the same of the service factory class get created if the get instance method is invoked simultaneously by two different threads of invocation right as instance is returned to the okay think i uh, move ahead no questions i hope this is clear right so this is lazy initialization and the previous one was the e initialization right so our lazy initialization is uh, for in case of multi threaded application in case of multi threaded application the creation step of the lazy initialization logic is a critical section and must be placed in the synchronized use phase must be placed using the synchronized stack right right better right lazy initialization is usually preferred why because the creation work right which has might be holding on to expensive resources is awarded if instance is never actually accessed right second uh maybe had lazy initialization if the act if the instance is never actually used there is no need to create the instance itself so lazy initialization has is one advantage in this aspect that if your instance is actually holding on to expensive resources then why do you actually 
created instance initially and just keep on holding it and there might be case that the instance is actually never used right lazy initialization is preferred in that aspect the second thing is there might be chances that instance creation itself requires some complex conditional creation logic right so in that case you have to place it into the get instance method right can use any one it is the initialization is preferred in actual implementation but writing code is required in the exam it's to be fine whether you write it using eager initialization or lazy initialization okay i uh, for it break here uh, we will come back and we will implement the factory, the cake factory that we have created and we will implement it using a single return 